So I brought another investor and then I met networking and he negotiated a low price and we each made $17,000. Hey everyone, Kevin Amos, Pine Financial Group, where we work together so you succeed. If you're just stumbling across our YouTube channel, be sure to hit subscribe and mash on that notification button so you get notified anytime we have great new content coming out. Today, Justin and I are gonna be talking a little bit about four creative ways to make money in real estate. You know, when I was getting started, it was very difficult because I didn't have the cash flow coming in. Cash flow is essential in business. We say it all the time. You could have a profitable business that doesn't cash flow and go bankrupt. So I was trying to be creative when I was getting started. Anything I could do to bring in some, some cash. And Justin and I sat down and we talked a little bit about four different ways that we see real estate investors when they're getting started make some money in this business. So Justin, you want to start us off with one of the ways that you can make some money creative, creatively? Yeah, so one of the ways that we were talking about that you can get in and start making money without having a big bankroll, without having raised a bunch of private money is bird dogging. So bird dogging, the way we define it, is going out and basically you're finding leads and you're finding these leads and you're turning them over to another investor. We talk about bird dogging and wholesaling a lot right. and they cross over a lot. But in my mind, a wholesaler is going out and actually getting the contract. They have to have the money and put down earnest money. Whereas a bird dog may just be driving around the neighborhood, doing the driving for dollars. Yeah, knocking but on doors. Knocking on doors, finding the houses where the roof looks like it's gonna blow off or the weeds are overgrown, or maybe there's notices on the front door saying they got other violations. And you're putting together a list of this and then you're taking that list and giving it to say a wholesaler or another investor and then that investor will run with the leads. So how do you make money doing this? Well, if that other investor is able to successfully buy and close on that transaction, they're gonna give you some money. So typically it's around $500 per closed transaction, something like that. But one of the other benefits, not the dollars, but the experience of going out and generating your own leads and then building the rapport with these That's other right. investors, it can be a great way to get started in real estate. Yeah, and you mentioned something that caught my ear there, Justin. You said uh, wholesaling, you can make more money, but you need money for earnest money and that kind of thing. And um, I think that that's in the traditional sense of it, that is true. Like if you're on the MLS and you're out there looking for deals, they expect some earnest money. But if you're out there knocking on doors or advertising to private owners and you're, you're meeting face to face with sellers of houses, they don't typically ask for earnest money. So it's very common to put houses under contract with no earnest money. And so another creative way to generate some cash if you're out there working and hustling is to get houses under contract and just flip the contract. Now we say that you are wholesaling if you're flipping the contract, but what I'm more talking about here is if you're getting houses under contract that you don't want. So let's say you're fixing and flipping and you're looking for high equity deals, but you come across a deal where the owner is willing to carry the loan for you. If you could put that house under contract, structure it with the owner terms, you could flip the terms deal, even if there's no equity in the property at all. So lease options, subject twos, we talk about that on this channel a lot or on, the, or on our Facebook page. Um, those contracts are assignable and you can get paid to assign those contracts as well. Yeah, that's another great way. When it comes to doing these things, you're gonna be building your team. You're gonna be working with other professionals, working uh, with property managers, working with landlords. Uh, and something that we found, something that we've both used in our business yeah. is someone that helps us with tenant placement. So if you're more interested in learning about the rental side of the business or just having that to supplement as you're growing and starting, something you might wanna do is go out and find potential tenants and help match them up with the landlords. So you may have a landlord you're working with, you may have a property management company that you've been talking to, and you can offer to help them out by maybe hosting an open house where the tenants will come in, or you can be collecting applications, you can be doing the background checks, you can do the tenant placement, find the tenants, present them to the landlord and say, here's the top three or four people, and here's why, I've ran background checks, I've done some other diligence, here's a way to do it. Yeah, we've actually seen investors do this, Justin. You said we both work with one that has turned it into a full-time business. Now, most of what we're talking about today is just how to supplement and get some extra cash coming in to while you're building your business. Uh, but this is a legit one. People will create an entire business around tenant placement. Yeah, absolutely. There's a huge need. Sometimes full-time landlords also have full-time jobs and they're not able to get around and you know show their properties as often as may be needed. So there's definitely a niche uh, that can be filled. It can be a great way to learn about how to vet tenants. It can be a great way to network with other investors, but it's also a great way to make money. Yeah, so that's three. The number four is to be an assistant to another full-time real estate investor. 
So one of the things that we did, my former wife and I, when we, we did our first fix and flip, we had a partner, we had to bring a partner in to help us out. Okay, because we didn't really know how to structure it. We didn't know how to negotiate it. Uh, I knew lease options really well. So it was just lease option, lease option, lease option. Went into this house and it was a big equity deal. This is something that we could make a lot of money on, but I didn't know how to negotiate it. I tried to present a lease option to someone that, that didn't even fit. It's like driving a, a screw in with a hammer, you know? It, it wasn't a good solution for this person. So I brought another investor in that I met networking and we went into the house, a different appointment, and he negotiated a low price that we could fix and flip. And we each made $17,000 on it. So it's a $34,000 uh, net profit that we split in half. And I was very happy to give up $17,000 because I wouldn't have made that money without him. And then he is an experienced investor. So what did we do? We decided we wanted to work for him. And uh, my former wife started doing all of his mailings and showing his properties and uh, helping him with the contracts. And, and we really learned a lot from him being his assistant working part-time. Yeah, so there's a lot of different ways you can make money. Getting started, partnering up with experienced investors, working for those investors, you can make money hourly doing different tasks for them. You can make money per closed transaction. You get paid when the deal closes. There's lots of ways to structure these things. And what we're trying to do is help you think outside the box, great ways to get started, even if you don't have a lot of money, to get started in your real estate business and start generating that money. Hopefully you liked the video. Be sure to hit subscribe. Check us out, pinefinancialgroup.com. Thank you.